Hello, everybody. Tiffany here. Welcome to my quilting life. Today is Sunday, so Sunday, where I'm hoping to inspire you to sew today, this Sunday, right now, with me. So grab some fat quarters because we're going to sew. <laughs> so, as you saw in the title of today's video, this quilt that we are going to make is called Fat Quarter Frenzy. It is one of my brain patterns. Yeah, nothing has been written down. It literally has been sitting back here. All the fat quarters have been sitting right here for like two and a half, almost three months, saying, Tiffany, do it, do it, get it done. But I kind of haven't, but it's still up there waiting to see how it goes. So either way, it's most likely going to turn out super awesome because they usually always do, especially when it comes from here. If I wrote a, if I would have wrote it first, it probably wouldn't be as great. So <laughs> grab 20 fat quarters. I know this is going to be a big quilt, but I like making big quilts. If it doesn't fit on the bed, what's the point, right? Well, actually, it doesn't really matter. But my goal is always big quilts. But you could do this with 10 fat quarters that you could have a smaller quilt or an equal number of fat quarters. So I have 10 prints. Well, they have, you know, flowers and big stuff and more flowers and some polka dots and some flowers and some more flowers, blah, blah, blah. And then 10 of them are background prints. So they're, they're doubles of everything. I have two of each because there was, you know, more than one bundle. So they're backgrounds. So what you would use is filler fabrics. So there's 10 of those. And this one is a print on it, but I'm using it as a filler. Why? Because, well, I have 20 fat quarters and that's what I need to make a very large quilt. So normally I would read and say hi to everyone, but I'm just going to do it all at once. Hello, everybody, because I really need to get started. This is going to take a while. Hopefully not more than one video, but we'll see how this goes. <laughs> anyway, so 10 fat quarters of two different kinds. So 20 fat quarters all together. The first thing I'm going to do. Shirt. Oh, I made a shirt. It didn't come out like I had hoped when I embroidered it. I need to learn more about hooping stretchy clothing because it doesn't come out <laughs> like you think when you first start. I thought it was going to come out perfect, but no, it kept puckering and grabbing. So I ironed it out so they'll be looking nice for today's video. But once it's washed, I bet you it's just going to go right back to the puckering and funky look that it looked like when I first made it. <laughs> so that's that. I made a new shirt for myself. I wanted to add more, too. I wanted to add my little butterfly emblem and stuff, but I was already mad that the needle and the, the, the what is it called, stabilizer was like eating the fabric and tearing it. Like it literally has spots where it like tore and I was really frustrated, but I'm still gonna wear it. I'm still gonna wash it. I'm still gonna wear it and so on and so forth. All right, first thing you need to do is press all 20 of your fat quarters, okay? What did we make? Fat quarter frenzy is what we're making. Press 20 of your fat quarters or 10 if you wanna use 10 or 12 if you wanna use 12. It just depends on how big you want it. Just know that this amount of 20 is going to be a queen size quilt, most likely. Remember, I don't do math in my head, so I never really know what it's going to be. I just know that it's going to be big. <laughs> All right, I'm going to move my uh, whatever there again. I forgot the word already. Print ones to one side, and I'm going to start with my backgrounds. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to like line up all the selvages really nicely because we're not really cutting anything nicely, but I do want it to lay nice. So I'm gonna line all of them up because they were just pressed, so, and I was stacking them, but I didn't stack them all that good. So I just wanna make sure that they're like, you know, sort of nice. There's like no real, what is the word for it with this? This is just having fun with fat quarters, honestly, is all it really is. Right, let's do more. I'm just lining up the selvages and kind of fanning them out so that they lay nicely on each other. This is probably, besides the ironing, the, the part that takes the longest. 
see I can line all four of these up at the same time. And I can. Let's make it work. All right, I'll lay these on here. So all of my selvages are lined up. We're gonna leave those on. We're not cutting them off at the moment. We're just gonna make sure everything is flat and mostly equal, which it is. And the first thing we're gonna do is, I'm actually gonna cut all 10 at one time because I'm a daring daredevil and I cut lots of fabric at once. We need a long ruler. Trust me, you need a long ruler. So this one is eight by 24, I think. So if you have a Fiskars, what is it? Six by 24, use that as well. I'm also gonna grab a 60 millimeter blade. And the first thing that we're gonna do is, I am going to, I hope you can see, can they see this whole thing right here? Yeah. The whole area? Yeah. Okay, good is I'm going to line my ruler up to where it's sort of probably maybe two and a half inches from this edge down here at the bottom closest to me. And then, see, we're gonna need a second ruler for this. I'll line it up to where it's gonna land about two and a half inches from the other corner. So we're gonna do that whole double ruler thing for me, just to line it up. I can aim for it and then adjust, but I wanna make sure it's like two and a half -ish inches from that edge, right about there, to where it's gonna land and right about here, line them both up. So I'm just gonna adjust my ruler as I go up. I just wanted to make sure that that's gonna land right. Well, everything's gonna fall while I'm at it. We'll just leave that there. All right, I am going to go ahead and cut through all 10 layers. I'm gonna go slow because this blade is not a fresh blade. I'm going. And going. Now I'm just going to slide the ruler up. I'm gonna make sure it stayed level down here. And I'm gonna continue my cut. And there we have that. See, it's cut on the diagonal from the full fat quarter, just like that. And then we're gonna take and make another cut. You're like, well, you guys are just driving me insane. Yep. We're gonna cut on that straight line. We're gonna line the roof. I need this side right here. We're gonna line this up on that line where three inch mark. And I'm just gonna scoot it up like this so that it covers end to end. We're gonna cut at the three inch mark. Everything's lined up. I'm gonna go ahead and carefully, oops, come on, make that cut. And I'm gonna do the same on the other one, three inches. I'm gonna line my three inch mark up on that opposite side, not this one, on this one. So you're gonna have two middle pieces Lining it up, lining it up nice straight on that. And again, the selvages are still there. I don't care about that. We're going to leave it and oof, it's going to suck because I'm cutting the opposite direction. I'm just going to have to like cut a little bit, move my self, cut a little bit, move myself. Did it separate? Oh, all but one little cut right there. And right there. All right. Okay, so this is what you should have. A big, huge triangle right here. Two, three inch center pieces and a big, huge triangle right here. So when you put them together, you have your fat quarter again. Okay. We're going to repeat this whole entire step now with the other fat quarters. So for now, I'm just going to move these out of the way. Place them out of the way because I don't really need them at this very moment. Nope. Okay. Now we're going to line up all of these guys and repeat the process. And again, if you're not wanting to cut so many layers, don't. Don't 
stress about it. You can separate and do three or two or one at a time, however many you want to cut. Just be safe about it. Just going to line these all up. You guys can watch me line it all up. Just hooking the selvages all together so that they're nice and straight and everything is lined up. And some of my fat quarters are shorter than others, but that's okay because once we make our blocks, everything will get um, trimmed down anyway. So, lining it up, shaking them out. I even got owls mixed in in here because it was in one of the little bundles. And it looks nice. It's going to bring all the colors together. All right. It's nice and flat. These fabrics seem thicker than the other ones. Well, some of them do. I'm going to do that same exact procedure. About two and a half inches from this edge right here. Like that. And we're going to go towards this edge about two and a half inches. So take a second ruler if you need to. to make sure you're aiming about where you need to. So there it is. I'm aiming here. So I'll just scoop my ruler up. I really don't need the second one. And I'm going to go ahead and make the cut. I'm just going to very carefully attempt to cut through all 10 layers. Feels like it missed something right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. I'm going to slide the ruler up. It's still lined up down here. Everything's still lined up. Nothing has been shifted or moved. And cut the rest of the way through. So I should have two pieces now that look like this. Now I'm going to do the same thing as I did last time. I'm going to cut over three inches right here. I'm just going to line up the three inch line along that cut, fresh cut edge. Three inch line is lined on it. I really need to change this blade. And you guys see the struggle today? <laughs> get it, get it. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Do you want me to cut for you? No, because you're not used to this blade and it bends. Okay. All right, and we're going to turn it all the way around and cut the three inches from this side. I know it's backwards, but you could turn your whole piece if you need to. I just am the weird one who just turns it around and cuts the opposite direction. Just like this. Oh my God, we're going to left hand this thing. This blade might be better anyway. No, it's not. Nope. No. no. Ah, here we go. Go through all 10 layers. Did it go? Oh my goodness. It's a miracle. I'm not going to cut through that many again. Trust me, guys. <laughs> We'll, we'll not do that one again. All right, so again, I have this stack and then I have my other stack over here. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to take, where is it at? The top corner from the other stack. I'm gonna bring it over here and I'm going to put this <laughs> there. And then I'm gonna put this big piece over here with the other one. Then I'm gonna skip a piece. Now I'm going to take this one and I'm going to put it over here and I'm going to put this one over here. And then there we go. We've swapped all of our pieces. Okay. I'm just going to move this out of the way. And guess what we're going to do next? <laughs> we're going to sew what we just tore apart together. <laughs> That's it, really simple, just like that. But we're not done after that step either. That's why I said it's gonna take a while. All right, so here is my fun part. This is the frenzy. We're gonna mix all this up and sew it all together. So I'm gonna take this piece and I'm gonna sew it to this piece. Now you do have to remember that this whole entire thing is biased now. 
it is definitely going to stretch and pull and move and shift and blah, 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 blah. So I'm going to line this up on here now, right sides together. I have about a quarter inch sticking out with my point on this one. That way they kind of line up and we will have less trimming to go. So just going to line this up and sew this on. And it would probably be good if I had a good stitch length. And I'm just going to let the machine take it in. I'm not going to stretch or pull anything. And then I'm going to grab the next one. So I'm just going to put the next two pieces in. I'm going to shift it up just a little bit so that there's about a quarter inch on this end. Okay, line it up. And again, there's going to be a little bit of scrap when we go to trim these, obviously. But this is the whole fun part. Is we're really not doing much, but there's going to be a big wow moment at the end. All the way off. Grab the neck. And remember, my fat core the same they were all sized so some of these are going to have a lot of hangover on the ends or this bottom piece is going to have way more down here than other pieces and that's okay because again we're not trimming until the very end anyway and i'm just going to chain piece all of it through it's all nicely lined up Some of you probably still cutting. <laughs> That's okay though. And I'm laying the big triangle on top of the centerpiece. We have quite a bit here to sew. See, that one had a really long end, but that's okay. Come on, get it under there. No fat quarter from any company is created equal. <laughs> because no fabric is created equal. But all the scraps that come off of this, obviously I'll use for something else. Even if I just sew them all together like a little crumb quilt. doesn't matter which one ended with what because again this is only the first step and today I made sure to roll two bobbins just in case <laughs> I have a feeling I'll go through both though because big quilts take more than two bobbins Hopefully everybody's doing well today and the weather is nice and at least you got to like either look out the window at the beautiful weather or step outside into it and get some vitamin D. I have stepped outside into our beautiful weather and got some vitamin D. And while I was out there, I checked the pool and it's only 75 degrees. So this girl is not getting into it until it hits 90 degrees. <laughs> it's going to be about queen size, hopefully. Cause you know, I don't do math in my head. I just do the idea of the blocks and building it and making a mess in my head. <laughs> I do that part. 
I'm pretty sure it's going to be large. And after I make the whole entire thing, you know, and the video is over with, then obviously I will update the video with how big it is in the description so that, you know, and the sort of measurements. I didn't write it down at first, but I'll try to in the description after the video. So I'm going to pass all 10 of these off to Scott while I sew the 10 of these together, and then we're going to combine the two. So I have to, sh you have to turn it on first. I have to, uh, stack them the way that I sewed them so I'm going to go from bottom to top so that way Scott can keep them in order for me hopefully you guys can get yourself an iron man or an iron child or a iron nephew or niece or something to help with this process But we want to keep them in order because I don't want to mix up the order because it's alternating colors. And we want to keep those alternating colors together. So here is all 10 of these. I do have to show Scott how to press these because they're on the bias and we don't want them to bow. So don't just fold them back on the iron. Don't just take the iron and push it back. It wants to lay towards this piece right here, towards the small piece. So I would say. Just run your finger down it like that so you have a nice hat, you know, like this. And then run your finger down it so that way it pushes it back. But don't just take the iron and, and force it back because it will stretch. I'm putting all these. Huh? Um, over yeah, there. you're ironing over there. We need to keep these ones together okay. right here. Pressing towards this one right here. I already kind of pushed it back. Just well, what do I have to do special? Don't Get let it. Out don't let it bow. Get your fingers out. Don't let it bow. Okay. Keep them in order too, please. Keep them in order. Okay. Yes. All right. Now we're so gonna sew. This is bottom or is this top? That is the top. Now we're going to sew the next sets together. So I'm just going to do the same thing, lining them up. I have about a quarter inch little V right here at the top, which is fine. I'm going to send it all through. This time I have the middle piece on the top. So I'm on pile one first. Pile two is going to be different. So we're just working with pile one, the first 10. The next 10 are going to change. We just moved them out of the way for now. It should go pretty quick though. It's pretty quick. So I'm pretty sure it's quick. So for me, at least. <laughs> I can't say that for everybody, but you sew at your own pace and that's what these videos are here for afterwards. My nails match this and I haven't got them done. I have an appointment tomorrow to get my nails done because they really long. Again, I'm not pulling or stretching anything. And if you're working with 10 fat quarters, you would do your pi one pile of five first, and then you would work on your second pile of five second. So 
so just know that you're making two separate piles because one's going to get moved around. It's just at this moment, it's out of the way. Yeah. And yes, I'm sewing across any excess length. So anything that I do cut off will be partially pre-sewn. Huh? Yeah, just it's getting cut off, yes. Uh -oh. But I'm putting them together first before we do any trimming. And yep, I'm sewing right off the salvage side. No big deal. This actually works great for big, huge, fat quarter bundles. You know, if you have a 20-piece fat quarter bundle and it has an equal amount of lights and darks, this would be perfect for that. I didn't want to use any of my nice fat quarter bundles for this. <laughs> I wanted to use what I always call testers, and plus it's all purple. I can't go wrong with all the purple. Because if it turns out like my brain sees, then it's going to be awesome. And I may make it again because it's super easy. <laughs> Except I probably won't cut all 10 layers at once. Or maybe I will. I'll just finally change my blade. All right, so the next 10, I'm going to keep them in order again. So this was my bottom piece. And then this is the next. And the next. And so on and so forth until the whole stack is up here. Any questions so far? Nothing? You guys are chatting amongst yourselves. I like when you guys chat amongst yourselves. Oh. All right. So these are going to get pressed again. These ones are also going to get pressed towards that centerpiece. This owl thing looks really cool. I like this owl. So I'm just going to finger press so that you can see it's pressed like that towards this three inch piece. If it stays pressed towards the three inch piece. So that'll go to Scott when he's ready. It looks like he's on the last one. Yes, and I kept them all in order for you. Let me see. Off. Let me see real quick. See what? It's good. They're flat. Every one of them again to make sure I did them. I did them. Nope, I'm not going over them. All right, after they're pressed, what we're going to be hooking them together. Then? These were gifted to me. 
All, right. All these mailbox openings. Yep, and every time I open the mail, they're in order. So we're going to wait until he presses all that, and then we're going to hook this two together. Are these in order, too? Yes. Is this the top? Yep. So we'll wait for him to press. Well, then you request the little bullock questions, because I'm trying to watch, and I don't have anything that I can interfere. All right. I'm wondering if my uh, chat bot is on. Well, you can't type on that thing, so you don't know. Yep, can't type on here. This is a no typing video. We use the computer. If there's a computer, did it? Use the computer. Give me my phone back. Um, I don't know if it's on, but we'll see. be welcome everybody joining in no it's not on while he's pressing I'll be right back I'm in the other room turning this on to make it easier for everybody. Ah, turn on, come on. Should be working. Should be working now. I'm hooked to a cord in the other room, so I can't bring it in here. I was on the computer for a while, and you know, when you're on it for a while, it, you know, dies. <gasps> there, now it should be working. Why can't you do it this way? Because this doesn't have that program on it. Oh, never mind. Never mind. All right. Let me try to scroll through and see if there's any comments because he's still pressing. missed anything lots of you here so many people almost 400 what i just saw that right now 386 of you wow amazing that's awesome yeah probably does got gloria got a juki yesterday the 2010 q that's awesome. Congratulations. Still reading. All right. Are they almost done? Yeah, maybe if you begin your reading. I'm reading. People are talking to themselves. You were going for over five minutes. Just I made sewing it. caddy from last Sunday. Love it. Definitely want to make more. I have my little sewing caddy right here. See? It's got all sorts of stuff in it. It's mainly bobbins. I cleaned up my little mess over here and all my bobbins and decided to have my little caddy sit right there next to me. How do you come up with these wonderful ideas and make your cool quilt Uh I come up with these ideas because my brain does not stop. It just those wheels are spinning even when I'm trying to sleep it just doesn't stop so I write down on little I have next to my bed a bunch of these 
little notepads <laughs> and while the wheels I just scribble it down in the morning I cannot read half the stuff I write so I'm like oh, okay sometimes I draw little pictures sometimes I whatever but when I come up with it I usually write it down but this one has just been sitting there I really hadn't had to write it down I was just like three inches three inches on the diagonal don't cut anything sew it all back together move things around sew it back together again and yeah it's kind of just like you know there facebook too and don't forget if you haven't joined already the this the in the link below in the description below is the link to the facebook group or you can type in explanation facebook and it should give the link to the group i'm not 100 percent sure because i don't know exactly what commands i've made so far but it should be uh susan's viking is getting repaired okay, so she has your favorite sewing machine and if you miss it i did make myself a tiffany's quilting life shirt it did not come all, out all that great thanks to me not really knowing how to embroider on stretchy fabric like when i did the tank top it was turning out okay it didn't grab the fabric it didn't do anything so i must have put it in the hoop properly that i didn't know i was doing and this one i put it in there properly at least i thought i did and i don't care what anyone says every single website says if you wear it tear it some other website will say if you wear it don't tear it and then another website will say if you wear it tear it and then another website i'm literally it's over and over and over so it's an equal amount of do i use tear away or don't i use tear away so i actually went to a bunch of different people's youtubes and watched some people are using mesh like an iron on invisible mesh i like that their shirts turned out amazing no need to even iron afterwards and then, you said you had to put the mesh on top and the tear away on the bottom um then some said use cutaway then some say you know what i mean so i was i'm just going to do my own thing and find what i like that's why i haven't bought anything yet i'm going to use the supplies i have and if i like it that's what i'm going to use <laughs> all right now we have two equal halves we're going to take this half and we're they're matched remember right here so this one matches this one it goes together we're going to keep them in that same order i'm going to slide this up to where a quarter of an inch sticks out right here so that when i open it it lines up with the top so it's going to get slid up so i'm always sliding it to the upper part not the lower part we're going to hook these two halves together Am I done for, a minute? for a minute yes so i'm going to go ahead no pulling it's all bias just lay them on top of each other anyways like with the embroidery thing i'm just gonna find what i like because at this time everybody's websites are all conflicting of each other like seriously they are everybody has their own style with embroidery and the, the things that they like to use so i'm just going to find my own style and my own thing i'm going to like to use until then i have to like waste a lot of stuff <laughs> till i learn but i still have more t-shirts to do so we'll see how my next one comes out Again, they're all in order still. Nothing is out of order. Come on, get under there. There we go. Stay. Talking to it. You could pin these long seams if you want to. After a while, you guys should know me. I don't like to pin. So I just kind of skip that step always. Everything still comes out pretty darn flat and straight and mostly straight, I should say, because even with the seam guide, I still can't sew a straight line. But I do have a consistent quarter inch. That's a plus. 
cutting instructions. Line up all your fat quarters, the ones that you're going to use, as many as you can cut at one time to make it easier, or you can just do one at a time. And then you're going to, well, the first thing you're going to do is make two stacks. So if you're using only 10 fat quarters, separate two stacks of five. And if you're using 20 fat quarters, then separate two stacks of 10. And then you're going to take two and a half inches from the edge of one fat quarter, two and a half inches from like the selvage side, stack them all up, two and a half inches in, about, it doesn't have to be exact, and then put your ruler down there, and then from the other side, two and a half inches in this opposite direction. So they're opposite of each other, two and a half inches in towards the middle on both sides. And then from there, after you make that first initial center cut, then you're going to measure over three inches from that cut one way and three inches from that cut the other direction. And make cuts. And then you're going to do that with the second pile. Same exact thing. And then you're going to swap your piles. You're going to swap the long one and the triangle corner, or the long one and the triangle corner. Either way, you're swapping so it's every other color from each pile. You're swapping just that for now. That's for pile one. So for my first 10 fat quarters, I should have an equal part of both, you know, on each side. And then my second pile is going to be a little bit different. Oh, yep. Yeah, they're really cool. Had fun making it. I use like off-brand stuff, whatever we can find on Amazon, eBay, you name it. It's cheap and it's cotton. So that's all that matters. And it's really linty too. It's like linty cotton. I use Signature sometimes, but the Juki doesn't seem to like it for some reason. Neither does it like Orphil, but I actually have some big spools of Orphil. And I was thinking about making a side rack for my machine with some stuff in a hot glue gun so that my spools can come up off of the this way instead of this way because it's not a big spool they're small spools I was thinking about having it come up off a certain way so I need to make a little thing for it to sit in with some hot glue and a some kind of dowel you know that hooks to the top here so that I can you know have my spools come off the correct direction because I think that's why I have so much issues with the R-fill thread but I have a lot of it, as you can see right here. It's all in there. I just need a different way for it to run through this. It runs fine on the brother machine behind me, but that machine's too slow for me to piece on. I prefer this one. <laughs> I'll prefer this one. And then we're going to move on to pile two while Scott presses pile one because they're all sewn and ready for the next step. Hold on. All right, so this pile, we don't need to keep it in order anymore because everything is going to get moved around from here. So we're just going to press it the way it wants to go, which is towards one side. So now you can see I still have a fat quarter. It's just missing three seams now. And you can see the ends are going to stick out like that. That's perfectly fine. This is what we're looking for. And this is why, as you can see, why I did that 
quarter inch little triangle when I did that at the top so that it stays kind of square so we have less waste when we go to trim. So we're just going to press them to one side or another. It really it doesn't, matter. doesn't matter as long as they are pressed flat. Billy says they use a zippy cup to take out the straw and run your thread through the hole. So again, you can see how it stays pretty darn flat up here. That's what we're looking for. So make sure that you line the triangle pieces a little bit up some so we have less waste on our final trim. The bottom will always have stick out though, but the tops should be good. I'm just going to pre-finger press these for Scott and then we're going to bring over the next pile so that we can start working on that. If you want to press your seams open, you can too. I don't ever press seams open, but... Do you like your juki? I love my juki. I wouldn't have any other machine. But then I haven't had any other kind of machine either, so I like this one though. I've had it for six years, over six years now, so... It's a wonderful machine. It's never had to be maintenance or anything because I do all that myself. Never had to have anything except for the plate needed to be filed down because when I first got it, right, the hole that. was messed up. Um, just lay them on the floor. Okay. Oh, you're, you got to keep them on a flat surface. That's just going to mess it all up. Yes. We'll stick them up here. So I'm just finger pressing these for now. That way it's ready for Scott to iron. And you can see there's plenty of color balance, even though they're the same color, you can see that there's plenty of balance between the two. So you can still, you know, still looks good. All right. Let's move this out of the way. guys but I guess it's not all right we're gonna bring this other pile over here now try to keep them as in order as possible so they're in order the way they were now we don't want this next stack to be the same as the first stack so it would be exactly the same we don't want that so the next step for the second pile, so if again, if you did 10, then you would have the five on this pile. Okay. We're gonna take this top one, we're gonna put it to the bottom. You guys notice I do this quite often with things. Then we're gonna take three off of this one and move it to the bottom. And we're gonna take the top one move it to the bottom because we're just making a different color order see so my original was not this my original was this and this together okay and then we're going to take three from this one and move it to the bottom do you have a large heavy duty plate what do you mean heavy duty plate i don't have i don't know what they're talking about i have a large heavy duty plate so now 
you should still have two of the same. These should be the same and these should be the same, but the order is now different than the original stack. This stack got moved. So this, uh, again, what did I just say? This was one to the bottom, three to the bottom, one to the bottom, three to the bottom. So it's mixed up now. Okay. So now let's sew the second set together. So I'm just going to sew these two together, these two together, and then the combined. So again, my triangle is going to stick out a little bit, about a quarter inch right here, creating this little V tip or pre-making a dog ear is what I'm doing. <laughs> and then sewing them together. And I'm also going to be keeping them in order as I do. So this pile should be completely different from the last pile. The whole stack. It's so fun. I like doing stuff like this. It's just messing it up and putting it back together again. Always create something fun, interesting, and fast. Yes, lots of purple. She loves her purple. And remember, don't pull or stretch anything. Just lay it on top and let the machine do all the work. And I didn't uh, pre-starch or anything, all this. I just ironed it and started cutting. As you can tell, it's going pretty darn quick. So I'm going to keep them in order again. I'm going to press towards the skinny piece, the three inch piece. 
with my finger for now. Just like this. And I use my fingernails to do this because if I used the pad of my finger, it would actually annoy my finger and the nerves in it. <laughs> Just so you guys know. Some people are always curious about that. Yes. yes, I do have a pressing tool, but this is all on the bias, so I don't want to stretch using a wood tool. I want to use my fingernails. Oh, I'm just saying. I'm done over here. You wanna... You're going to have another stack in a minute. No, just leave them up there. I can leave these in order, right? They're already in order now. Yeah, I'm saying I can't take these because then they'll be out of order. Yep. So I have to wait until you're done. Yep. So I have to leave them in order. Pieces. The fan is trying to blow it all away. Four hundred people watching this. What? How does that happen? Four hundred of you. That's yeah, amazing. Four hundred and twenty-one. All right, there's all that. Okay, you got to stay in order, right? Yes, please. I'm just going to throw that over here for now. Just let them hang like that, I guess. All right, let's sew the other side now. So again, I'm going to leave a quarter inch or so sticking out of the top, creating a little V. That way, all those top corners line up mostly you know mostly they will mostly line up And don't forget, if you make something that I do in my videos, not only if, if you don't have Facebook, you don't, um, you can also share it on Instagram and do the hashtag Tiffany's Quilting Life, all one word. That way I can see your projects as well. And it doesn't even have to be stuff I did in the video. You know, you can hashtag that Tiffany's Quilting Life on Instagram and on any of your projects so that I can see the things that you guys are making too. And or just post it in the Facebook group if you're on Facebook. And I don't want any other social media. So I don't have any other social media. <laughs> There's a lot of people that have all sorts of other ones. I don't know the names of them all, but I don't use any of that stuff. So I'm already, I do not have a Twitter. <laughs> I don't have that or I don't know any other. I don't know. There are tons of them. 
I don't use any of that stuff. <laughs> I have a hard enough time keeping up with Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> I'm really lazy about posting on there. I try to, though. At least on all the projects that we sew in videos. All my off-camera stuff. Well, that's another story. <laughs> if I don't make it in a video, then I don't really ever get it on camera. I don't ever take a picture. <laughs> I'm really lazy about that. I don't mean to be, but... I see how quick this is going it's wonderful of course it does help that i have a, a an iron man here <laughs> helps things go a little bit faster so that i don't have like five hour videos <laughs> Although people still watch my five hour long videos <laughs> from earlier videos, which is good. So bobbin one already out. Time for bobbin number two. Hopefully this lasts through all the next steps. If not, I'll just have to roll another. And this time I didn't air so forever before noticing. Which is a good thing. It's always frustrating when you air so. All right, two more, and then I can start. Press, get these sides pressed and then put them all together. And then move on to the next step. Again, we're gonna do that same procedure. I'm gonna press them towards the three inch piece and then I'm gonna keep them in order. So I'm always gonna put the last one I sewed on the bottom. These owls are so cute. Getting it done. Getting it done. 
How many of you think you're going to make this? I'm really excited that it's easy enough for a beginner to do. That's the only thing about my channel. My channel focuses on beginner friendly stuff and it seems like that's all I ever do, but I am a advanced quilter. <laughs> but I like making the beginner projects for you guys, but sooner or later I'm going to start throwing in some um, advanced stuff again because, you know, I haven't done an advanced quilt since the Mariner's Star Compass quilt. <laughs> all right. So here's these guys ready for the next step, which we can't do anything about until they're pressed. So let me turn this and look at comments while he presses. All right. I have to collect some fat quarters. Again, I'll run through it real quick. I'm using 20 fat quarters, but you can use an equal amount of however many fat quarters you want. So if you want to use 10 fat quarters, use 10 fat quarters. If you want to use 12, use 12. If you want to use 14, use 14. Although I think the final layout won't work with some of those numbers. Uh, you said you beat me. That's gonna but, matter. Nope, it's not going to matter. Um, starting with I am starting with 20 fat quarters, two piles of 10. I have my background, what I'm calling my backgrounds, or you can have lights and darks or whatever have you. I have my background prints and then my big prints. Then what I did was I cut in two and a half inches, about two and a half inches from one edge to about two and a half inches from the opposite inner edge. So this way, not out way in way so in from the bottom in from the top then i cut that straight line after that's cut separate a little bit and then cut over from your center line cut over three inches make a cut from your other side's line turn the ruler around cut in three inches from that that way you have a big triangle a three inch strip a three inch strip and a big triangle and then sew the triangles back together after you flipped the pieces from one pile to the other. So I went and grabbed the backgrounds from the one pile to put with the prints from the other pile so that it's an equal split. So I took one corner and swapped it and then left the other piece, took that center piece, swapped it and put that and then left this one. So they're always alternating in color and I kept them in order so that way all of the pieces look like this. So they're still in order. So it just alternates to this, to that, to this, to that. So we're only swapping out two of the pieces, whatever ones you want to swap out, whether you want to do this corner and that or this, you know, same thing. It's the same thing both ways. This is the top one. Yep, I'm just going to open the bottom while he's doing that and start pressing. I mean, pressing, sewing. So again, I'm going to hang it over about a quarter of an inch. And I'm putting my pieces together now, the two halves. And then there'll be another couple steps after this. making sure that they match and they do. I'm going to take them right sides together, leaving that little corner tip. It's about a quarter of an inch sticking out. That way at least one end always lines up. This 
one. This one. One with this one. This is so much fun. My brain is coming together. Yep, we're doing the happy dance. <gasps> iron. What happened to the iron? Hit me in the iron. We're doing the happy dance. <laughs> funny. Yes, it is funny. And again, I left the salvages on. Because all that's going to get cut off anyway, and the final trim. should still be in order. Yes, they are. We're just going to continue on with the last of these and then move on to the next step. Come on. Really? Wow. That's crazy. Well, welcome to all of you who are here today and joining. That's a lot of you. I'm very surprised. Maybe the notifications are finally going out and people are actually getting them <laughs> to know that I'm on. <laughs> Yeah. What about the what? I don't, I don't know. No, I didn't, it's honestly. The commercial right there, from the very second commercial. How do I make this go away? I have no idea. See, there's all of you, but then I don't see the comments. If I scroll down to the comments and your head's cut off, that doesn't do it. I already did that. Oh, I don't know then. No, nope, there's no dismiss button. I, you're just going to have to have my head cut off then. I have a weird ad on my page. Right above the chat. It's kind of strange. I've never seen it do that before. I've never seen it do it on anybody's page before, honestly. Must be something new with YouTube. What, it's covered all the All right. Here. Oh. 
just going to press this towards the three inch piece, so towards the middle. Okay, if it wants to go towards it, this one flowery print is a lot thicker than the rest of the fabrics. It's probably the thickest one. It's woven differently. So again, I'm just finger pressing for now until they go over to Scott. To the iron. 20 fat quarters is what I have started with and what I'm using this whole time. <laughs> 20. So you can take a 20 piece fat quarter bundle. And you can have it if it has equal parts of darks and lights that'll work perfect for this. You just separate them into two piles, a light pile and a dark pile. We're just mixing everything up is pretty much all we're doing except the set each block itself has these pieces like this. They're alternating in color as you can see. And I'm still, my piles are still separated. So my first pile and my second pile are still two different piles. So when I give this to Scott to press, it'll still be two piles. Actually, I think I'll just press it myself real quick. more. It's going to be a large quilt. Is it going to be queen size? I have no idea. I have no idea. I just know it'll be big. Probably. It can be made over 500. That's by far for 450 with the first. Wow. It's crazy. 500 people watching me make a mess of my fabric. <laughs> Two more, and then I'm going to press them real quick. And last one. So pretty. All this purple. Oh, come on. What does it do if you hit the like button? What does it do if you hit the like button? It shows YouTube that you like this video and the content that I produce, I guess is the word, <laughs> create, whatever. It shows YouTube that you like it so that it will recommend it to more other people. It's in the the way it works. <laughs> Say hi, everybody. Say hi. That's Thumper, my kitty. Oh. You don't know how to get down? Okay. That's my kitty kitty. All right, so I'm just going to quickly press these, the final seam. <laughs> yes, he's, he is. All right, there's one. That pre-finger pressing kind of helps when you get to this part. And yes, they are going to be wonky at first. Don't freak out that your fat quarters now look like weird 
sticky out pieces at the bottom. <laughs> we took some seams. We lined up only one edge when we started sewing them. So that way they had plenty of room. They never go back the way they originally were once you take a seam away, let alone two and three seams. So you guys get a little sneak peek of the colorways going on. Is anybody's cat's like one eye sort of like closes and stays closed, but not all the way closed? It's like they're peeking with one eye, but not the other. For some reason, lately, Thumper's eye, he's been peeking with it where it's kind of open, but not. It's closed, and the other one's like wide open. It's weird. And we're wondering if it's like an eye infection or something be going wrong but i don't really want to yeah he doesn't mess with his eye or anything so it can't be like an infection well we're not sure but it's just weird he's never done that before and he's been doing it a lot lately but it's not constant it's just random especially when he's staring at you he's just winking at yeah he's, <laughs> he's winking he's like pick me up and pet me okay you did a bunch of them you want me to do the rest now so you can tell no, it's good. I'm almost done. Oops. They're so cute. I'm loving it. Like the Mickey D's saying, I'm loving it. Dun, 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 dun. I'm loving it. Sorry, now I got it stuck in my head. I don't really want McDonald's. The only thing I like at McDonald's is their fries because they're salty. And I like salty stuff. All right, last piece. And we're going to go to that next step, which you guys are going to love because it's easy. Nothing about this is hard. Well, maybe sewing the along the bias the whole time is hard, but that's about it. All right. So here was one pile. That's the pile that I swapped things around in. Here's pile number two that I did not swap things. I just, you know, moved them from one position to another, swapping with the opposite pile. So here's my two. We're going to take one from each pile. So I'm going to take one from this pile. I'm going to take one from this pile. It doesn't matter which two as long as everything is opposite. So you can see these are completely opposite of each other. No two are the same. We're going to set that aside. We're going to repeat that process by taking one from one pile. And let's take this one from this pile. One from this pile. Again, completely opposite. Pair them up into twos. I'm just going to make a big stack right here. I'm going to take one from this pile. And take one from this pile. Do you like salt vinegar? No, I don't like salt vinegar. I just like salty items. So I like pretzels with salt, you know. One from this pile. One from this pile. Again, I'm just pairing them in twos, as long as they're completely different from each other. One from this, one from this, looks good, put them together. I'm just making a nice big stack. This one, and this one. One. And... Oops, come on. You're doing opposite color? Yep. Two different ones per. So 
piles of two. This one, and this one. And that should leave. No, that should not leave that. We're going to swap these out because this one can go with this one instead because it looks like my last couple pieces have the same ones and we don't want that. So this one with this one and this one with this one. There we go. They are all mixed up now in piles of two. And I'm going to start with the pile of two that's in front of me. So what I'm going to do is going to sort of line them up right here. So where we knocked that quarter inch down and made a nice straight corner right here, we're going to try to keep those together. So you can see I have a nice straight corner. The other side has the funkiness hanging down from it. We want the two straight corners to go together. So we're just going to line those up. Sort of. They're, they're not perfect. They're not going to be perfect because we're going to completely trim this whole thing anyway when we're done. So you can see they're kind of funky and it's okay when they lay on each other funky so you can see it's not completely on top of each other. But I did want one corner point to at least work from. So we're going to flatten this out. I'm going to grab my big ruler and we're going to make some cuts. Where is oh, a regular 45 millimeter blade this time? All right, my first cut. You're not using the big dog? Nope. I'm going to line this up right here. My first cut is just going to be however far I want it. So say I want it right here. Guess what? I'm going to cut it right there. See that? Look at that. My second cut is going to be wherever I want it. So if I want it right here, I'm going to at least make it straight, though. I'm not going to, you know, not measure. Just like that. Are there seams to match? Nope. So see how this is right now? There's three pieces. We're going to take this middle one. We're making three separate cuts. It could be however far you want in. So if you want to go five inches here, seven inches here, and three inches there, however much is left over, you know what I'm getting at. Just three piles, three, two cuts. We're going to take that middle one and we're going to flip it. And we're going to put this one on the top and this one on the bottom. And now we're going to hook them together. See how funky it looks? Totally messed up. Now we're just going to sew that back together again. So I'm going to line up my ends. They're not perfect. Again, we're going to be trimming this whole entire block in the end anyway. So just find an end, line it up. So a quarter inch seam. Nothing is matching. No matching. There is no matchy matchy here. So those first two are together. I'm going to take this third one. I'm going to line it up on here. You can see that it does not meet up at this end. Like I said, there's going to be some waste on here, but that is perfectly fine because we're going to be trimming all the blocks anyway. So I'm just going to start right here. It didn't matter which way you pressed, honestly, as long as you have a really cool block that looks like this. And they're all going to be different. None of them are going to be the same because I didn't use an accurate number. That's the whole point of this frenzy part is there's no accurate numbers here. It's just the first initial cuts. So we're going to put these two together. Just going to line up one of the edges. It doesn't matter which one you want to line up. I'm lining up the bottom one just because. Open it up, put the other one on. And we're doing this in sets of two. All right, 
so here's number two. So technically, if you turned them, they're not pressed, but if you turn them, they're like opposites. It's like alternating. Will you make the same size cuts on all of them? Nope. Or will your cuts vary? They're all going to vary. So there's two. We're going to grab our next set of two. Again, I'm going to line up one of the corners. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just want them together. None of it's going to lay completely flat on, you know, you're not going to have this seam directly on that seam. It's not going to matter. We're just going to, I kind of put it on my mat so it's sort of straight, you know, and then I make a cut and then I make another cut. So it doesn't really matter. Nice straight cut. I'll go about right here. There, I'm right there. Nice straight cut. We're going to flip that middle and swap it. And we're going to hook those th together. There's no accurate number here. This is the fun part where it just gets all wonky and crazy, but looks super cool. So I'll slide those two in and then these two and then add the other side. And then the only last thing that we'll be doing is straightening the blocks. It seems like a lot of work, but it really isn't. So I'm just going to add this side to it now. Right sides together. I'm just lining up the bottom because it's easier than the top. That way when we go to trim, we have some mostly flat angles to start from. <gasps> Grab this one, put it on here. I'm aligning down, like I said, because here and it's shifting everything which is kind of good because it allows the movement in the diagonal piecing okay so snip them apart and then here's two more blocks each cut varies so it's not the same distance on any of the blocks nope not the same distance on anything that way nothing lines up this whole entire, the whole purpose of this is to not have anything line up. We don't want anything lining up besides the, you know, putting the blocks together once they're ready. So there's two more blocks. Grab the next two. Again, I'm just going to line up my mostly straight edge right here. Just like this. About how many quilts do you make a year? A lot. <laughs> I make a lot of quilts a year. All right, so I'm going to just come over here again. I can go this wide right here. Oops, open my blade. And then I can go over just like four inches and it'd be super fine. Just like this, as long as it's nice and straight. So here I have these pieces, swap it or flop it and then swap it. You know what I'm saying though that over there. I'm going to just chain piece these two through. This part goes pretty quick at when you start cutting them, but they're, none of them are going to be the same. So all 20 are going to be cut differently. And I'm not really using any numbers. I just, you know, my second cut, I'm lining up on at least something that's straight, which kind of helps. Slide it down, add the next piece. Do you know what the name of the video is where you actually shave the thumper? Um, the video of me shaving thumper. I, I, it's called shaving my cat or whatever. 
It might have been removed, though. It might not be a public video anymore. Yep, they were very rude and mean. Well, what lady was asking earlier about shaving it, she yeah. where it is, so yeah. Yep, I have a video of shaving the cat, but if you didn't see it then, then obviously, if you don't see it by typing it, it's most likely down because I got some really, 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 really mean and really rude comments that I should not shave my cat, but obviously in very mean, lots of very mean, rude comments. And it wasn't just from, it's not from you guys, it's not from names I recognize throughout my channel over the years. So it, there's a lot of them from just random people. So there's another two blocks and it just continues on. So I line up. And cut three sections. And again, I'm kind of lining up on the mat at the same time. I, I want it to at least be kind of straight. I'm looking for, you know, some sort of, you know, straightness. It doesn't have to be perfect, but there's one. I'm going to come over the whole eight and a half inches of my ruler for this one. Cafe, like facet fabric. It's fabric, a fabric line. Oh, okay. the designer. Oh, yeah, it's a designer. All right, so the next two, as you can see, this part goes the quickest. You just make your two cuts, sew them together. You will have your quilt done in no time. And again, I'm lining up the bottom, not the top, because it's straighter. So you can see I have some hangover, but that's fine because every block is going to get tr trimmed. So just open it up. Grab this top one. And I could chain piece all of them through. I could have made all the cuts, flipped every piece, and just started chain piecing them all through. But that would mean I'd have to make more piles and stack things out of the way again. <laughs> so I'm doing them in sets of two, which is fine. You do it however your heart desires whatever's easiest for you whatever you have space for if you can only do two blocks at a time the whole way then do two blocks at a time the whole way it's meant to be fun beginner friendly so here's this one and here's this one so they're opposites of each other. Next two. I'm just gonna line them up. You can see these ones are way off from each other. So you can always just like try to center it a little bit so that you get a little bit more here and there. Right there. And Right here. Just remember that this whole entire quilt, this whole, all these pieces are done in threes. So your cuts, when you did your beginnings, these centers were three inch. When you go to do all this rest of the stuff, you get three pieces. You know what I mean? It's in threes. Did you flip the center piece? Yes. Did I flip it and swap it? Yes. 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 I think I did. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did. When I open it up, yeah, they're all continuously going in the same direction.
I'm trying to pay attention. And if you don't, then you're just sewing your same two pieces back together. That's yeah. all. <laughs> they just flipped. That's all. Yeah. It's okay. I think this is so much fun. I'm enjoying myself today, guys. Wait, I enjoy myself every day that I'm in here. Line up my bottom. You can, or I'll just do it when I'm done because I'm quick. There's the next one. And the next one. See, some of these are looking like they're getting kind of small. But that's okay. All of my leftover pieces will be used to make something with. If you were going to buy some fabric, what would you buy right now? If I was going to buy fabric right now, yeah. um, I would buy something purple because <laughs> I've just cut up all my purples. <laughs> you have so much purple, I don't think you could cut up all your purples. Yeah, I would, I would buy something. I don't know what, but I would buy something. You, you would buy 108 that you just told yeah. me the other day. Yep, would I would buy backing. 108 fabric because I need some 108 backing fabric. All right. Flip it and swap it. Uh, yes, it does, but I'm not trying to let it bother me because I'm in a mood. There's something about sewing and making quilts that it's not that it takes the pain away. It just helps my brain be distracted from it. So it's better than taking a pain pill because I'm not making myself all high. I'm literally high on making a quilt. So. Yep. And if I really, if I was really in a lot of pain, I could have Scott right now rub my neck and back. I rub your shoulders, your neck, your back. It would be kind of hard for him to do my backpack as I'm doing this, but. I do your shoulders. It mainly, back. mainly screws with my legs. The, the sitting doesn't bother me. It's the constantly standing up sitting down standing up sitting down that really does mess with me because it makes my legs hurt more because my legs go numb hanging off this like I said I'm short so they don't touch the floor completely so my legs kind of just dangle there except for the pedal the pedal foot my foot is on the pedal but it's still kind of dangling there to be on the pedal on the pedal I'm, so nope, I don't use the bath tub. It, we have one of those bath tubs that kind of drains while you take a bath. <laughs> There's no purpose in filling it up. The water just drains out because it's old. But in the summertime, I do swim and I keep my pool at 90 and I do my exercises. And then in the winter time, I go to my friend's house to the hot tub. So that really helps. This one's kind of cool because it's got the skinny one in the middle. All right, next two. Wow, this one's definitely way bigger than this one. That's okay. Flip. 
Whoop. It used to be, but then it's too high and I have a hard time using my knee lift. I am 100% always using my knee lift when I sew. I even do it when I stand and sew right here, because I can stand and sew. I still use my knee lift. So if I lifted my foot a little bit more, it would be hitting, so I don't. It's okay. I'm used to it, guys. I am used to everything. Because any chair I sit in, whether I sit at a dinner table or we go out to dinner somewhere or lunch, wherever I sit, my feet dangle. She's a shorty. I'm not that short, but I'm short enough to not be able to touch the ground. I think my legs are short compared to my torso. That's what makes it hard. And how my son, who's 16, still living here, is six foot two, I have no idea. Because I'm short. Everyone in my family has gone beyond me in height. Six foot. No, Damon's 5'11. Oh, really? I thought he said six. Maybe he's at six. Oh, I don't know. I thought he was 5'11. You not in house? Probably not. Yeah, my girls are taller than me, my mom, my dad, my sister, everyone in my family is taller than me. I'm just a little shorty. Oh, this one's cute because of the owls. They're upside down for you or right side up. Depends on the block. <laughs> They're all going to get trimmed anyway, so. All right. Three more sets to do. I'm just going to lay this here. Everything's mostly straight. It's almost seven. Okay. We're almost done. We're going to cut yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, are you going to quit for this weekend and then film all together again next weekend? Um, let's go right here. Mm, I don't know. Oh, all right. And then swap. And then sew them together. See, doesn't have to. Doesn't matter where you put it, as long as it's there. Yeah. See, some of you guys are shorter than me, so you guys know that that your feet don't touch the ground. With me, they go numb though, and I get little hemorrhaging spots down at the bottom of my legs too which is kind of not good when they hang for too long that's why I get up and down a lot but that also bothers me it's like a lose-lose but as long as I'm doing this I don't have a problem <laughs> I'm just enjoying myself Come on, get under there. Wow, that one's way different in size. Woof. Another one and another one. Oh, that's so adorable. I'm loving it. And two more. I mean, two more sets of two. And then we're probably going to get off of here till next week and then continue on with all the next steps. That'll give you guys all time to make all your blocks. Oh, you can put a pillow on the floor underneath. I could. Oops. Good idea. Plus your feet stay warm. <laughs>
Um, yes, I do have cold feet. All right. Lop it. Swap it. And so. And then I have one more to do. And then we'll get off of here and continue with next week. will be part two. <laughs> And you'll all have time to make your blocks. Oops, why did I break it? Oh well, let's just add this anyway. There's one. One more set of two to go. And there's the second one. All right, last two pieces. Well, what's your gripper handle on your ruler? They like that. Oh, it's, you could find these at Harbor Freight. These are the Excuse my French. These are the oh shit handles that they sell at Harbor Freight, Walmart, wherever. And you usually yeah, put them. Uh, you usually put them in your. Let me see if I can get it. Come on. on it yeah. Pops it pops off. Anyway, it's suction cups to it. You get them at any of those places. Walmart. I got mine at the thrift store for like a dollar fifty or something like that. And a lot of people use these so that you don't really have to hold your ruler down at an end. You just hold on that and. Nothing moves or shifts or anything, but these are actually designed for your showers so that, you know, if you, if you fall, you have something to grab onto. They're designed to sit on your shower walls. That was the original purpose of them. And quilters decided they wanted to start using them. So here we are using <laughs> these. It helps with this ruler because this ruler actually has a non-slip grip on the bottom. So see, I don't I don't have to do anything. It just does it doesn't let the fabric slip. So due to that fact, I have to have a way to like kind of pick it up easier because it's really hard to pick up a non-slip ruler at the bottom, you know, like this every time and adjust it. So the handle actually helps with that. All right. So I have quite the good mix up of everything fabrics here, which is oops, broke my thread. Before you get off, I'm gonna tell the reason why you're looking at it really and asking me to do it. Oh, if you guys haven't noticed already in the description below every single video, if you guys are planning on shopping. <laughs> It doesn't cost you a thing to use any of my affiliate links, which is Sewing Machines Plus, Fat Quarter Shop, Connecting Threads, and my local quilt shop. They're all listed in the description below this video and any other one of my videos and on my main page if you go on from a computer. And it just helps support my channel. If you do make a big purchase, I do ask that, you know, if you can, remember to. If you make a big purchase, just email me and let me know because for some strange reason, especially with Sewing Machines Plus, when people purchase uh, sewing machines or anything, you know, that's a big purchase, like $75 or more or $100 or more, for some reason, if you end up calling in, it actually void link. So you actually have to do it directly from the website because they won't give me my credit when you call. So I just, you know, tell you guys to email me and let me know that you made a big purchase so that I know 
if it went through or not, I can look because sometimes it doesn't. And all it is is support for my channel using those links, guys. Yeah. And I do have uh, all my other social media and my Etsy shop where I list pre-made quilts down in the description below as well. I try to use those on DStash. And if you're interested in any pre-made quilt, email me before you purchase it on Etsy because Etsy now has even more fees. They, they just charged us today for who knows what. And I am out of bobbin. Oh, I had another one. Good. Yay. That way I don't have to roll another at, right at this last seam. I have a whole stack of them poked here with my bobbin buddies. Which are helping because when they fall on the floor, I can actually find them and they don't unravel. <laughs> That was the last one anyway. Oops. I thought I skipped it. There's that. And there's that. So I should now have one, two. Today lady got a random charge from Etsy today too. Really? Yeah, maybe it's something Three, when they burn. Four. I'm Did trying to show them to you. Five, Did we get money from Brenda's six, so steady table? Um, I don't know. Seven. I don't know what you guys purchase. I just know big numbers means big purchase. So I should have 20 blocks here. And I'm going to go ahead and obviously end for today and then I'll press these off camera so that we can go to the next step next Sunday. I'm trying to drag on my Sunday videos more than one video because I if I keep making a brand new project every week I will have way too much to quilt and I don't have enough backing fabrics for some of these big quilts and I don't have in the yardage I'm gonna have to piece together tons of stuff and when I do pre-mades I try to have like a solid one colored backing. I know it seems weird. I do have lots of fabric and I can make a ton of piece backs, but for pre-mades, when I list them, I like to have one solid color. Not solids, but you know, one color throughout. So there should be 20 blocks. If you did 10, you would have 10. If you did whatever, you would have whatever. The next step is going to be cutting them. But if you guys didn't notice, see how this one is not very messed up. But if you go down to say this block, Look at that size difference. So they're going to get trimmed. We're going to find the smallest one is what I'm going to do and then trim them to the smallest one. But I will do that next week with you guys. So you can see some of these. You still have to take into account that there's a piece missing here. So when you go to trim your blocks, you definitely need to make sure you're paying attention because they are not at all the right size or the same size so that's the part where we're going to be wasting a little bit of fabric do you use cotton thread yes yes cotton thread yes but you can use whatever thread you want whatever thread you can afford i buy the cheap stuff because i just which, do which, which one was really you, small look at this one this one was small too which way do you wind the tension knot the tension also the presser foot is going up on the Juki, the tension dial goes to clockwise. The right. Yes, to the right to go to pull your bobbin thread to the top and to the left to pull your bobbin thread back to the bottom. If it's your bobbin, then there's a little dial on the bobbin casing that you would turn. Oh, like this one's off sized. Look at how that hangs on the bottom. So by next week, these should all be pressed and ready for us to do the next step. So there they are. 
all 20 of my blocks. Pretty cool, right? So that's the making of the blocks part for now. So I'm going to go ahead and get off of here. Was there any other questions, Scott? Not yet. All right. I've been asking you as we go. Okay. So I want to thank you guys all for hanging out. Don't forget to come back next week on Sunday at 5 p.m. It's right now. It's Pacific Standard Time or Mountain Standard Time or Arizona Time is all the same. Just remember, if you're on the East Coast, you're three hours ahead. If you're Central, you're two hours. And if you're me, you're on my time <laughs> this time of year. So. It's which fabric you had sent to you, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Some of it. There was some of the purples that weren't. I so added they purples. Even know if it was from a fabric line or just. Oh random. no! I fabric. it's just random fabric. Some is probably from Walmart. Some of it's probably from who knows where. I don't know what any of this is. I just pulled all the purples. So and I had the them sitting behind me for a couple months now. So, all right. So again. Before next week, just get your blocks together, get them pressed, and then I will see you guys next Sunday to put the next steps together, which is pretty much trimming all the blocks to one side. All of them need to go to the same exact size. So if you want to do that in advance, you can, and then we'll get to the next step, which is putting everything together. So I will see you all next week. Thanks for hanging out, and don't forget to check out things in my description. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.